Uh, Marilyn is not. Marilyn is not sure. So the regular session for the Clackamas Board of Directors meeting is come to order. And reminding you, our mission is to safely protect and preserve life and property. And then this meeting is called to order per ORS 192.610 to 192.690. ORS 192.650, the meeting is being recorded. The video recording of this meeting will be placed on the Clackamas Fire website. Chief Brown, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, there are no changes to the agenda. Okay. And fellow directors, any questions or comments about the minutes from the November 15th board meeting? Nothing. Hearing none. Uh, here, there are, there are no changes to the minute. They stand approved as written. Now, public comment. State uh, citizens regarding the district business. Tracy, did we have anybody sign up for public comment? Thank you, Mr. President. No, we did not have anybody reach out via email or phone for public comment. And I'll check the attendee list to see if I see anybody with their hand raised, if they would like to talk for public comment. Uh, so I, don't, I don't see anybody, sorry. Yeah, Thanks. the citizens, if you are calling in on the phone, you can select star nine to indicate a raised hand and a star six to unmute or mute. Um, I know because there is no earth shattering subjects on the agenda, I think everybody will be staying home and taking it easy on a cool, rainy day. Uh, now, let's see, what's, what am I calling the roll for? Oh. Missing a page, sorry. Ah, uh, misplaced a page. Sorry about that, friends. You're good. We should be at um, uh, the presentation for insurance. Oh. With Jeff, yeah, with Jeff Griffin. That that's the one medical. Uh, I think I missed a page somewhere. I don't know what happened. Okay, so approval of the regular. Uh, no, that's public comments. And for number five, what is number five? I'm missing number five. Number five is an action item, Thomas, and it's a presentation of insurance renewal with uh, SDIS to include okay. a longevity credit and rate lock guarantee program. Yeah, somehow when I put it, I must have missed that. Okay, is Jeff Griffin in the audience? What is that? Is he making a presentation or we are making a, an action item? He's making a presentation first. Okay, okay. Here he is, he's coming on now. Okay. Happy holidays. Hey, Happy Jeff. holidays, Jeff. Thank you for uh, letting me be with you tonight. Uh, I think we all long for the day when we can be actually back face to face and, and uh, somewhat back to normal if possible. In your packet is a, a review of your upcoming renewal with special districts. If you take a look at page 25, if we could start there, uh, that's a great uh, place to start because it has a comparison of prior year and this year. If you go to the far right hand side uh, and you scroll down to where it says total all lines, you'll see a 10.45% change. I wanna tell you how we got to that and where you're at and compare you to other districts. In February each year, we send out a budget projection letter. That budget projection uh, this year, we, we believed that rates were gonna go up between 12 and 15% uh, because of reinsurance. Uh, about three weeks ago, SDA sent a letter out to each of the districts saying rates did go up. Their base rates, their uh, reinsurance rates went up 12%. Uh, 
Um, in your case, that's not what happened at all. In fact, uh, your rates uh, went up uh, right at 4%. Most of the change you saw this year were in uh, several categories. First was uh, materials and services. Uh, you had a change from 53 million to 58 million, uh, which was a significant increase, excuse me, uh, 56 million, which was a, about a 3 million change in uh, your liability rate. Uh, it, it, it accounts for about $5,367 of your rate change. Also, because as you're aware, uh, your property values have gone up fairly significantly over the last, uh, last year with uh, inflation. And uh, working with your staff, uh, we added in about uh, 10.6 million in property values of, of an increase, which was about, uh, represents about $10,980. The vast majority of change this year from last year was not in rates, but actually in the what we call exposure units. So that represents about $16,350 of change. Uh, the actual rate change that most agencies saw was 12%, you saw 4% change. That's to your credit. If you look further down on that page, you'll see your loss ratio sits at about 25%. SDA or average is about 60%. That's a total credit to you, elected officials, your management team, and your firefighters. You're not having the losses that a lot of other fire districts, other special districts are having. Uh, and, and congratulations. You did hit uh, all 10 of your best practices. Two of those comes from the, uh, the lectures that we do, and we're anxious to work with you to schedule a lecture for next year to get those 2% uh, next year. And as you know from special districts, all you have to do is be in the room. You do not have to be awake, which is, uh, I think, a real generous offering from special districts. Special districts did add in three new lectures. I'll be working with the chief uh, to pick the one that best fits your situation. Your board is so seasoned and so evolved. Uh, more than likely, I think the chief will pick one of the newer uh, of the three lectures that SDAO has approved for us to do. So now we do eight different lectures for special districts. Longevity credit. Uh, in the past, SDAO was splitting up $2 million over a two-year period of time with all of their members uh, who qualified, uh, and you do qualify. This, the next two years, they're actually splitting up $3 million, so that's a nice uptake. So there was a premium change of about 10.45%, uh, but most of that is not in rate. Uh, most of that is in exposure units, uh, more payroll, more revenue coming in and more expensive, uh, uh, higher values in our property. I want to commend your staff. Uh, and I also want to thank Mark for putting up with me, laboriously going through each of the vehicles, uh, each of the buildings, making sure that they're insured exactly right. Uh, so on a good page, uh, you're not seeing the rate increases that most are seeing. If you turn towards the front of the booklet, page 14, I just want to remind you that we are a public entity. We're subject to an Oregon tort law 30.260 to 30.300. How we would be sued would be a little bit different than most uh, for-profit businesses. SDAO starts their policy and specifically states we cover you for tort actions with some minor exclusions, intentional acts. Uh, if uh, uh, one of us uh, lost our temper at a board meeting and removed a civilian's teeth with our, our fist, that probably would not be a covered uh, peril that's considered an intentional act. But directors and officers liability, every time you vote, uh, the actions of our firefighters for uh, fighting fire, for their EMS work, uh, all of those would come under, under the tort limit and, and you're well protected there. STO does a great job with that. They do something that's a little bit unique. They add in a series of uh, supplemental coverages they can't pay fines, but they can pay to defend you, whether it's an ethics violation or an OSHA violation, they do an outstanding job there. They have by far the broadest uh, liability jacket out there and include a thing called pre-loss legal, which we've used several times working with your staff. There are other markets. They're not as competitive. Right now, the for-profit markets don't provide the same coverage, uh, whether it's ethics defense or pre-loss legal, uh, they struggle with some of the earthquake coverage, uh, but if we had to go someplace else, there are other good forms. They're just not as good or inexpensive as special districts is today. 
Um, if you turn back uh, to page 18 on the property, one of the things I love most about their property coverage is they add in a number of the things that are unique uh, coverages that a, a lot of companies don't automatically give us. So we have a thing called lawn ordinance. Uh, some of your buildings uh, code has changed. Now we'd have to put in, if, if we lost the building, we have to put in thermal pane, e-glass, uh, new uh, wiring uh, to meet code. This law and ordinance picks up code change. So they're not just replacing the building that was there, but they're replacing it so that you're legal and meeting county and state requirements. They also have a thing called debris removal. Uh, as you know, if we lose a building, there's a tremendous amount of cost in just uh, getting in there and cleaning it up and getting rid of the toxics uh, and the other items. I did put in, uh, just for your review, uh, your property schedules and your vehicle schedules. And I do want to point out on your, your vehicle schedules, vehicles are insured one of two ways, either under replacement, which means that, that the insurance company has three options. They can give you either replace it, excuse me, the three options are repair, replace, or cash out. So with our newer apparatus, some of our newer pierces, uh, we have those at replacement cost, so you can actually get new for old. And this is where your staff did a great job drilling down on what it would cost to get uh, some of those pieces of apparatus. As you know, a brand new engine company uh, is getting very expensive. Uh, they're north of $700,000 uh, and climbing. You'll note that some of the vehicles are, are older and we can't get replacement costs. The best we can get is functional which means they're gonna get you one very similar to what you had. So you're not gonna get a 2002 Pierce Enforcer. You're gonna get uh, something fairly close to that year uh, that we lost. Now, SDO does a good job. Usually we get a year or two newer and, and usually it's a little bit of an, a betterment, but where it took some time this year uh, was actually going in and looking at uh, the places where we buy uh, use apparatus uh, like Brimley Mountain and trying to make sure that what we could replace it with was very close to what you had if it is functionally insured. This is a sentinel takeaway for you tonight. The supply chain uh, challenge is having a huge impact on all of our equipment. So I'll be meeting with your staff uh, and I'll be bringing aspirin and coffee up uh, to Mark and staff because uh, it's changing so rapidly. Three weeks ago, in talking with Pierce, they're having a hard time getting axles. So uh, a year ago, if you bought a, a new engine company, it'd take about 12 months to get. Today, that's going to be somewhere around 18 to 24 months. Now, it's starting to drag used values up. Uh, a really good uh, 2006, 2008 uh, engine company uh, earlier this year would have been about 100 and a quarter. Today, it's about 150. We're expecting it to go up a little bit more. Um, so we're watching that real closely. So about mid-year this year, we meet with staff again and, and reevaluate our, our engine companies. We do expect through the supply chain, all of those items to be drifting up and used is getting harder and harder to come by. Why I wanted to bring that up for the board is that the chief comes to you and says, look, we're supposed to be buying two new engine companies next year. We want to, we want to speed it up and put them into the pipeline today probably a very smart move, but just be uh, uh, flexible. Uh, if you're bidding uh, any kind of construction jobs, in the old days, we'd get a hard number. Today, we're getting a soft number. We're getting a number that would go like uh, cost plus. So just be aware that uh, whether it's uh, our equipment, air packs, uh, nozzles, hose, fire apparatus, buildings, all those things are changing rapidly. So what you may budget for today or plan for today may be significantly different when you get around to purchasing it. So just be, uh, be aware of that. Um, your tort liability, uh, the, the tort limit right now in Oregon is about 2 million. You're insured for 10 million because we can still end up in a federal court for some civil rights and a thing called false arrest. Um, we, are, we have looked at higher limits. We will continue to look at higher limits. Still in Oregon, that, that limit holds very, very well. Uh, all of our districts around the Seattle area, we have at 20 plus uh, million. The court systems are different and they do not have a, a similar uh, tort law. Questions so far on the coverages? 
Let me move into just a couple of other areas uh, so that you're aware. Oh, by the way, uh, all of our vehicles are at a thousand. Yes, Jay. Hey Jeff, was there a, was there any changes with our division of assets when we uh, separated from SDK to Fire? Did any of that stuff play into, come into play? Um, you know, I'll have to look. Did some of that apparatus and equipment go back over to Estacada? Well, I wasn't quite sure how they were insured, if Estacada was insuring those or if we were insuring those or how that played out. So that's my question on that. If that, if, if um, I don't know, Nick, do you know what the answer to that is? Jay, I think I remember uh, they were all, uh, Estacada insured all their buildings and equipment. And I okay. think we took on their people. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Just so you know, our, our apparatus is a thousand dollar deductible. We've done a point of diminishing return, looking at higher deductibles. We can't save enough to make a two or a five thousand dollar deductible work for auto. Our buildings are at five thousand dollar deductible. We did a point of diminishing return on that. Uh, we looked at higher and lower. The next step up would be ten thousand, and it, it also does not pencil. That does not mean that those numbers won't pencil at a later date for us. Um, just a couple of sidebar issues for you. Any other questions on the insurance piece before I move on? Anybody? No? Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you so much, Thomas. Um, this is crazy time. Uh, you're seeing it, uh, you're experiencing it here with our board meetings, with our staff, with our firefighters. Firefighters are tired, they're fragile. Uh, we've gone through 21 months of uh, a period of time nobody thought would, would ever happen. Uh, it, and it's not just COVID, uh, the whole civil unrest. If you're in a uniform today, you are a little bit of a target with civilians. Uh, we're having a situation where people are throwing things at our, our firefighters. Uh, we've had situations not in Oregon, but in other states where firefighters have been called out to situations where they were actually uh, in a, a, a cost situation where they were being set up um, uh, to be shot at. Uh, I think you've read some of that. Uh, we, we live in a very, very strange time. It is having a huge impact on morale and culture. Um, we have a huge civil unrest right now. In the old days, I would tell you, I'm, I'm concerned about civil rights from hiring, firing, promoting, and demoting. What I would tell you is that, that we're expanding that now uh, to civilians. And I just want to give you a red flag, watch for complaints, watch for public record requests. We do those things routinely. We supply those records, but just be aware that we're really in the crosshairs of the public today, like we've never been uh, before. Uh, and I will keep you posted as, as more of this uh, uh, unfolds. Um, but I'm seeing complaints like I've never seen before. Recently, I had a board uh, and one of their board members uh, we, it was a Zoom uh, in board meeting. One of our board members loved to post some personal beliefs behind them on the wall that was visible in the Zoom call. And we had complaints about that. Uh, things that we would have never thought would happen two years ago are happening today. And just be ultra sensitive and especially be tuned in to the chief's recommendations and staff's recommendations when they say do this or don't do this or be aware of where we're at. These, these times are changing very, very quickly. I wanna tell you that cyber liability is in free fall from the insurance marketplace. Uh, we've had several major attacks from out of uh, country, as you're aware, uh, against public. We are squarely in the crosshairs of the cyber bandits because so much of what we do, freedom of information, we're an easy target. Uh, your staff knows, and, and they are very good about watching for these bandits trying to come in and. And, and coaching your accounting staff to send $10 million here or change this account number, uh, but they're getting extremely sophisticated. I am gonna recommend that we do a cyber test this year that we have a company out of Seattle that can do that. You might have one. We wanna make sure that we're high and tight with cyber and, and just be aware that this is a, a major area of concern moving forward. Special Districts has had a spike in auto claims over the last year or so. They're watching that closely. And I'll be working with you uh, just to enhance our driving policy and, and uh, make sure that when it comes around to renewal next year, we can validate that we're doing everything, uh, everything right. Um, on a sidebar with workers' compensation, uh, we'll be working with your staff. Uh, the workers' compensation companies are very concerned uh, about uh, 
the presumptions uh, and uh, what that means to us, uh, not just cancer and heart, but also post-traumatic stress. Um, and I'll keep you appraised on what that looks like. But we're going to be giving to SAFE a document that uh, essentially validates all that you do with Heather and the rest of your team, complying with 1581, 82, and 83, showing them that we are doing everything right in advance uh, and, and try to keep those rates as competitive as possible. Shifting to some fun things, if Build Back Better does become a reality, there will be three pockets of revenue for you. Now, we just finished up the AFG grants. You've done a great job in the past about grants, uh, but there is a billion dollar pocket going into FEMA uh, on some uh, prevention items. There'll be a billion dollars going into DHS, and then there's going to be an, uh, uh, more money going into some other uh, enhancements that, that will be available to you will keep you posted if in fact that does uh, become a reality. And then last, uh, I, I would like to point out, I apologize, we're getting an Amber Alert. Thank you so much. Uh, Noah is reporting a very uh, severe potential uh, winter hit come January, February, snow and ice. Just want to give you a slight reminder of both for driving, but also for our buildings uh, uh, and our equipment that we're prepared for uh, for that moment in time. Next week, we post our OSHA 300. I think you've got a note on that. Your staff, your staff is doing just a phenomenal job, and it's a, a pleasure and honor uh, uh, working for you. Any questions or thoughts, um, Mark? Working with you, any any thoughts from you on how we can better serve you? No, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate the presentation. Thank you so much. Chief? Thank you, Jeff. Does any board members have any questions or comments? <clears throat> and this takes us to our first, right into our first business item. Request board approval of insurance renewal with SDIS to include the longevity credit and race lock guarantee program. Mark? Um, sure, I don't really have anything uh, much to add beyond what, what Jeff has already said. Um, obviously this, this is within, within what we budgeted um, for the year um, and staff, including uh, Bill Bischoff, our fleet director um, and um, Scott Valance at facilities have looked over the, the properties and, and fleet that we're insuring. So, um, so I think I would just recommend a, approval. Um, I will point out that we did, you know, notice that in the the district's purchasing policy, it's not clear that this action actually required requires board approval. Um, property and liabilities insurance is mentioned as something that we that we can do. The fire chief can do without going to the board, um, but we did bring it forward just because that has been um, past practice and for transparency. Thanks. Thank you. Does the board members, Jeff, Thomas? Let me add one thing, if I can. You may remember several years ago we changed, SDO pays a commission, a, a, a very uh, a lucrative commission of about 14%. Uh, because of your size, anything over $100,000 in this state, uh, you can go to a fee and we went to a fee basis several years ago, which is uh, I think about a, a third of what the normal uh, commission rate is. And that will be uh, separate from this policy. So what you get is actually a net, just the insurance cost, no commission including that. That's just a gentle reminder. Thomas, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Do I hear a motion to approve the insurance renewal with the SDIS to include the longevity credit and rate log guarantee program? So moved, Jay. No. Moved, Jay. I'll second, Chris. Chris seconded. Stacy, please call the roll. Tracy. I'm like, oh. Did I lose Tracy? Oh, I guess it would help if I unmuted. Sorry. Oh, about she that. was helping Marilyn. Oh, she's in. Hi, okay. Marilyn. Tracy. Okay, sure. Um, Please call the roll. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. And Jim Searing. Yes. Thomas Joseph? Yes. Chris Haas? Yes. 
And was Marilyn in here? No. no. Okay. I didn't think so. Okay. Thank you. But do I not to get to vote? All right. I called on you a few times. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yes. Verbal. Yes. Thank you. Uh, motion passed. Thank you, gentlemen. The next item is request the board approval of contract with Wilco for fueling services. Fleet Services Manager Bill Bischoff. Hi, Bill. Hello. How are you guys? Good, good. Good evening, Mr. President and members of the board. Um, I'm just here to, to talk about the uh, the staff report and the Wilco contract for fueling and services as presented. And um, I could give you a little bit of background, but it kind of just, it kind of states it there in the, in the memo for you. But the, this is just kind of a incidental thing that we tend to do every year. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, 13, this was, yeah. this was um, delayed this year and we're looking to, uh, renew it here in December to kind of line up a little bit better with our, our exemptions that we have with, with all of our fueling across the board, but we'll go, especially since that's where the majority of our fuel comes from. So i um, happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Bill. Does any other directors have any questions to Bill or comments? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the contract with the Wilco for fueling services? I so moved. Moved, Jim or Chris? I hear them both together. You select, who do you want? Chris beat me by Jim had this one. Chris moved and Jim seconded. And Tracy, please call the roll. Okay, Chris Haas? Yes. Thomas Joseph? Yes. Jim Searing? Yes. And Jay Cross. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Again, appreciate it. The thank you so much, item, guys. Thank you, Bill. The next item is request board approval to authorize the fire chief to enter a lease agreement with Huntington Technology Finance, Inc. for Panasonic Tough Pad. Chief Technology Officer, Oscar Hicks, where is he? Oh, here he is, Director Hicks. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Happy Monday Night Football. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Um, uh, <clears throat> just here to uh, um, present, uh, based on the staff report, um, the need uh, uh, to go into a lease agreement. Um, just some background. I didn't want to make the board, the staff report, you know, five pages. But um, what it is, is uh, we have used EM, some tablets for EMS and operations. Uh, we experimented through, through some trial errors with some uh, Surface Pros, some iPads. Uh, we also used uh, two of these uh, tough pads now, more recently during the wildfires uh, and have tested those out and got rave reviews from the crews in terms of their durability, uh, the ability to be more mobile uh, in that sense as well. Uh, I think I have some partners in crime with me, uh, Chief Mullick and Chief Santos, if they may want to add some more to it. But the, <clears throat> the kind of the reason behind the uh, not to exceed is it's going to be based on the financing company. Uh, Huntington Technologies was one of the first ones that gave us a quote. So that was kind of a name we had uh, when we started with the staff report. Uh, there's other financing companies, and what we we're looking for is kind of a package, uh, not only with the tough path, but also the cases. Uh, for those as well. Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions uh, if there are any, uh, or, and I offer a, a Josh and Dan if they want to add to this. Yes, Jay. Was, uh, Oscar, is this just for MDCs? These are tough pads. This yeah, is separate from the MDC, sir. But it's, a, it's the replacement for the MDCs, correct? No, sir. No, sir. No, no sir. So, if if I could add to this, what, what this is, is um, these are the tablets that you'd use primarily on EMS calls, but you'd also use them for uh, crash recovery and otherwise. So these are the mobile device that would go inside people's homes. Um, we've had, as, as you all know, 
um, EMS providers and, and firefighters are difficult or hard on equipment and, and equipment outdates really quickly. And we're experiencing that. So we'll pay $800 for a disposable tablet and, and it, within a year it becomes obsolete and or broken. Yeah. So with this type of a, a lease option, we get a durable a unit that's that's compatible and consistent with our with our MDCs yes. um, and the other tough books we're using in the field. And in addition to that, it's something that is repairable and, and, and the software and the hardware is all renewable um, in the maintenance is taken care of outside of our out of outside of our organization which is really a positive thing for us so this is a good movement it supports all of our our, our software and the systems that we use in the field and um, we won't have to worry about any of the other details past that um, yeah thanks thank you josh thanks for that josh you know i uh um i know that uh i know that a number of years ago amr got rid of their tough books and i know that uh, some of the folks that uh, work in the district are basically said, please get rid of the tough books and replace them with anything. <laughs> so, so yes, I think that's, uh, that's good to hear. So thank you. <laughs> any other directors have any questions or comments? Uh, just that I appreciate Oscar holding his report down to one page. Nicely done. <laughs> Brevity is the soul of wit. <laughs> no problem, oh, no problem. I can make it shorter. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, sir. Do I hear a motion to approve to authorize Fire Chief to enter a lease agreement with the Huntington Technology Finance Inc. for the Panasonic Tough Pad? Thomas, real quickly, sorry. Yes. Um, it the motion should should read enter lease agreement for the Panasonic Tough Pad, not any specific company. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Please. Uh, Tracy, please amend the minutes accordingly. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Done. Directors, do I hear a motion? Uh, so moved uh, as per the amendment. Jim, uh, Jay Cross moved. Second. Chris. Second by Chris Haas. Tracy, please call the roll. Ms. Joseph? Yes. Chris Hawes? Yes. Jay Cross? Yes. And Jim Searing? Yes. Thank uh, you. Th thank you once again. This motion passed unanimously. That is the end of the action items. Now we have, uh, the, is Genoa in the audience? Is she here? I had an email from her that she was attending, but I do not see her in the list of attendees. Yeah, if she at, if she attends, in, in a, okay. we can later on include her if, if she has anything to report. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, and the board committee and liaison reports. The first thing is uh, executive committee, Marilyn Wall was going to make the report. Uh, I will make, uh, our, we had an EMS uh, emergency executive committee meeting. Uh, Nick and uh, Marilyn and I attended. We had a, Marilyn uh, express uh, some of the pro uh, protocol that need to follow through for the process items that we are doing and has given some guidance to the fire chief. For example, uh, a process was as a levy, for example, what should have taken place is to hold a committee meeting, schedule a work session, invite the local 1159, share the topics with them, include them in the conversation, and how the local 1159 come to the work session to discuss the topics. And there were other discussions items, and uh, we appreciate Nick's uh, open uh, acceptance of corrections, and he did, uh, does it very graciously uh, we have been working through, and I think uh, it, it, the relationship have to continue as a brainstorming with everybody, the whole board member. One of the things that I believe in personally, the transparency of and the accountability of the board members amongst each other. I don't want to have the whole knowledge and hold that as a power. I don't believe in that. I want to, if anything is happening in the district, but that it requires our attention. I'd like to have every board member be involved and informed on that. And another one, Nick informed us he has been 
searching, considering to a new attorney group. And uh, right now he has been using Miller Nash and uh, he's leaning towards going with them. And Nick, is there anything else you want to update on the executive committee meeting that? Yeah, I just, on the, on the, the legal piece that was brought forward through Maryland, um, we are at the time of renewing and I had shared the, the interest in, in looking somewhere new. We will, we will have more to bring forward, uh, hopefully in the next board meeting, maybe the following uh, regarding action uh, in, in that area. But I want the rest of the board members to know, Nick really appreciated the feedback and commented that this was an example of him moving too fast and it'll give him a little bit of a slowing down and getting the process done and appreciate the feedback. So thank you, Nick. Um, Jim, could you report on the interagency committee we had? Did we have a meeting? Yeah, we did. Sure, yeah, we had two meetings um, to report on. The, the first was the interagency committee, our own internal interagency committee met just to talk uh, about the Gladstone discussions. As everyone recalls, uh, Gladstone was potentially coming to the fire district uh, to discuss the potential contract for service. And those discussions have slowed down. In the meantime, Gladstone's looking at their alternatives, taking a little bit more time. Uh, we don't have any actual interagency committee meetings scheduled with Gladstone, but the chief group is meeting with their chief and their city administrator. And really at this point, uh, we're just letting them take their time to decide what it is that, that they need and where they're headed. So when I'm done, perhaps if one of the chiefs wants to add to that since they're actually meeting with the Gladstone personnel. Uh, the second meeting, we had an interagency meeting with Sandy's interagency committee on December 1st. Uh, we reviewed the current IGA the chiefs did a good job reporting how everything's going. It sounds like the current IGA with Sandy is going very good. Uh, nothing but good, good remarks. And, and then we discussed uh, next year's contract since the IGA that we signed was actually a two year IGA that second year coming up. Sandy is looking at possibly adding wellness. So we talked about that to the current IGA and in the discussions regarding station 18, as everyone knows, we're staffing station 18 duly and Sandy may choose to compensate us for the staff for a year or two rather than actually uh, hire and put their own employees there. So we talked about that, we thought that was good. And uh, the feasibility study, progressing. I think everyone probably knows we have a joint board work session scheduled for Tuesday, January 4th. Uh, Josh and Gerke and uh, Jason from Sandy are working with the consultant to put that together. It won't be the final product being talked about, but it'll more be uh, an update uh, the interagency committee members are being asked to say a few words, and then uh, it'll be more or less a kind of a public open house work session input for opportunity from the public. So kind of a variety of, of those it should be a real good meeting. And then following that, uh, there will be a survey that will be submitted to the public to seek further input uh, on uh, collaborative efforts and, and uh, things like that. So everything with Sandy is going very good in my opinion. It's a great partnership in many, many ways. So unless the chiefs have anything to add or Thomas, do you, do you have anything to add? No, thank you. I think you said it well. Any uh, chiefs have any, anything more to comment? No, I, I think uh, Director Searing said it was spot on and, and the partnership that uh, that Chief Schneider and, and myself have and, and Chief McKinnon and, and the rest of the staff together, is, it's, it's really uh, something pretty cool. So I uh, do wanna turn time over to uh, 
uh, Chief Stewart uh, to give a small brief update. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, Gladstone last week. Um, sure, sure. Uh, just, just to add to uh, what Director Searing said. Yeah, thank you, Chief. Uh, and as Director Searing shared, um, beyond the interagency, interagency committees, um, certainly staff does work in the intervening times. And so we, we met with them. Uh, Chief Brown, myself, met with Chief uh, Huffman and their city administrator, Jackie Betts. Uh, midweek last week, uh, just to cover uh, where the relationship had been, where we're headed. Uh, and they shared a, a couple uh, pieces with us uh, that are worth sharing with the, the board here. Uh, first is one of their big pushes was uh, the uh, challenges they were having with their staffing um, for, for their benefit. They have stabilized that to a degree. They've worked uh, an agreement with their local to provide for temporary full-time hires. So they're looking at moving some of their part-time employees to, temp, uh, to, to like a 90-day uh, full-time status uh, which alleviates some of their staffing concerns and, and frees up some of the chief's time to, for other endeavors. Um, they expressed their ongoing commitment to uh, the relationship and appreciate the, the working relationship just like Chief Brown ensured that we have with Sandy. I believe we have the same with Gladstone. Um, that's, that's the city administrator, fire chief. Uh, their battalion chief and, and just on down the staff um, from us, as well as our other interactions, uh, such as Denny Dahlgren being the, the designated fire inspector out there, uh, having a great relationship with them. Um, so that's been a really positive thing. And then just one other uh, service request, I, you know, if you said it, uh, Jim, I missed it, but Sandy has also requested some quotes for SCBA repair and maintenance. Um, and so we'll be getting those to them as well. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, thank you. Director Cross, could you briefly update us about our recent EMS committee meeting? Oh, um, boy. Um, I guess the, the biggest thing is that the staff and Josh's, uh, Josh's Santos's team is working uh, tirelessly on a whole bunch of different things at the county level, working with the county commissioners with the ambulance, uh, the ambulance contract. Uh, a lot of things that the uh, this board and previous boards uh, challenges that we've had. Um, uh, there's nothing finalized yet, uh, but a lot of strong work moving in the right direction. I'm sure uh, Chief Santos will be coming to us in the next few months uh, with um, more information. Uh, but at this point, it looks like he's he and his team have got things moving in the right direction uh, with the county commissioners, with AMR, uh, with uh, other things that are going on. And so right now, the best thing for the board, I think, to do is just to let him and the rest of his folks just keep doing what they're doing. And when he's ready for a full board presentation to let us know what's going on. Uh, but right now, um, some of the concerns that we had had several months ago uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Chief Santos, but I think some of the concerns we had several months ago uh, are not near as much of a concern now as they were. And so I think uh, uh, they're doing uh, some strong work there. So um, other than that, um, I don't really have a whole much more to share with you unless Chief Santos wants to um, add anything to that. So, Josh, anything to update? Well, you will be uh, reporting anyway. Yeah, I'll just wait till I report and give you a brief okay. update. That's yeah, great. Thank you. The board informational updates and comments. Anybody have anything to enlighten us with any ideas or informations? Nobody? Well, I have something. This is going to be a very big, big deal. There is a big bash happening in Gresham next month. And uh, I was thinking about maybe I should sell some tickets to get in because it's going to be hard to get in. Chris, you don't know what I'm talking about? Do you know? One of the big chiefs in Gresham is retiring. They are having a big bash party there. And I'm thinking I should make some money on that, kind of get, getting to get inside. <laughs> it's going to be on January 3rd. Those who don't know, of course, we will we will take the RSVP and the money. So Thomas, remember this meeting's being recorded. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so See, I told I told Josh earlier I cannot use my normal talk in the board meeting here. Okay, sorry. Okay. Information <laughs> information only. Division departments, fire chief. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Director Sharing hit on a couple of the points that I was going to speak to. 
Um, and uh, one thing I, I would like to point out is uh, this last month, Chief Paxson was selected to be on the Oregon Fire Chiefs Association, the Legislative Committee, and engage in OFCA um, and lobbyists to better understand the issues that impact Clackamas Fire moving forward. Excited about Brandon uh, engaging at the state level. Um, and then, and then again, also uh, the feasibility town hall scheduled for January 4th. Um, other than that, that is all that I have to report out. I will turn time over at this point, if that is okay, to uh, Gov Governmental Affairs Battalion Chief Brandon Paxton for his uh, report out. Brandon. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, directors. Um, just a couple brief updates. Um, November was focused on uh, holiday safety for Thanksgiving, as you could well imagine. Uh, this year, we got engaged with the turkey fryer uh, videos, and um, it's amazing what a slow motion camera can do, and it actually garnered uh, quite a bit of social media attention. It reached an audience of uh, over 511,000 views, which equated to over 800,000 uh, people reached. So, and that was as of December 8th. I'm sure those numbers are much higher by, by now. We keep getting updates. Those numbers continue to increase, but really, um, I think it, it speaks volumes to the efforts that Tracy has put in to build that program and, and the reach we're now seeing through that. Um, Isaac Hamilton, as you know, is our uh, new PIO and he is continuing to uh, get his feet wet. November was busy for him for incidents. So he's continuing to learn and, and build relationships across the county. And he's doing a fantastic job, really fortunate to have him. He's got the, a great demeanor and an incredible work ethic. So really proud of him and the team uh, as we move into the holidays and the first of the year. So uh, with that, if there's any questions, happy to take those. Questions, directors? Okay. Assistant Chief Stewart, will you give right. an update on the strategic services, please? Yes, thank you. I touched on uh, just, just briefly uh, with the interagency relationships, and I know Director Hicks will be up momentarily. What I'd like to do is just really comment on uh, our support services uh, departments. So back in uh, November 12th was Deanne's last day as our logistics manager. And uh, since that time, we've had really uh, Deputy Chief or Division Chief Carlson and really all the support services step up uh, to help with the transition to, to a current model um, that's still being evaluated. Uh, but, but within that, I'd like to thank a couple people in particular. One, uh, Denise Burkholder, who, uh, and this speaks to the kind of the, the concept and, and style of Clackamas Fire. Two years ago, Denise really reached to Deanne to suggest that she wanted to learn more about the position has been growing into that. Uh, so all that background knowledge that she's been gaining and the experience of, of asking to do more over the last two years has really set us up for a position to be successful. And then DC Carlson also stepped over to uh, move his office into the logistics building. Uh, it really provides that day-to-day -day position that, that Deanne held uh, for so long and, and took us to such a great place. Um, so he's continued to evaluate that, uh, but really the transition against uh, been successful because of uh, support services staff, uh, fleet staff, facility staff, everyone stepping in to, to help uh, break down the roles, responsibilities, and, and move us forward. Uh, we also hired a new employee into support services. So this position had been vacant since August 8th, um, but we have a new parts slash small engines technician. Amy Wilson uh, began at the start of this month. I'm um, really excited to see her here. Uh, she's going to be a great addition. Uh, again, she's going to work for logistics, but uh, her primary role is supporting uh, fleet services and then the line through the small engine repair pieces. Um, one other thing that we had worked hard on, or I should say that Chief Carlson, Chuck Carlick, and Justin Lynn did, uh, was making sure that our department, our district was ready for a conversion or an analog radio system for our 800 radios. Um, and there was a, a big lever that was supposed to be pulled uh, to, to switch us to digital. Uh, we had taken care of all of our pieces, and that was just the diligence of those uh, individuals and other support, uh, making sure that we had done all the upgrades or reprogramming of our radios, both mobile and portable, uh, to make sure that we were set. And we were. Um, unfortunately, the implementation has been delayed um, just uh, for about a month uh, to make sure that our law enforcement partners had time to complete some of their radio programming. Um, and a kudos to our crews in terms of this changeover, they were able to test on the digital system. Um, our folks were working on that so much, trying to get associated with this kind of this test channel uh, that CECOM politely asked us uh, if we could not do that anymore. Um, so uh, we, we apparently declined and said, no, but we can switch to a different channel. So it, it worked out for both parties. Our crews got to train and CECOM got a little bit more of a quiet radio. Uh, that's the update that I have. Thank you, board. Any questions, comments? Okay, Chief of Technology. 
I'm back. I'm back. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Um, uh, hey, we're into a new building on Station 3. I have two nice windows. I get gun shy when people walk by it because I'm not used to it, um, but I'm enjoying it. Um, but it's been a busy week, especially this past week with some of the cybersecurity issues. And I know that uh, Jeff talked about it briefly in terms of insurance, but I would say probably the last year and a half, uh, COVID brought a whole bunch of other things besides uh, uh, wellness and, and health. Um, just brought forth a lot of uh, players that want to try to utilize that to take advantage of social uh, um, engineering. And so one of the things that I've been looking at, and I don't know if we've uh, announced this, but we have a person in our staff, Rashid Sarati, who's a national security uh, advisor, C certified. And so we've been leveraging some of that information and, not, and knowledge uh, with some, they call pen testing or penetration testing, uh, kind of what Jeff was talking about earlier. We're just researching some providers uh, to help us with that, but also, utilizing some of our internal knowledge to do some internal testing um, as well. And part of that, uh, we'll be doing like an application audit, uh, not only just from uh, trying to see out what efficiencies we can gain, but also what types of vulnerabilities do we have or are we exposed to uh, in the outside world. Uh, other than that, working on developing some cross skills inside this new environment. Uh, we now, uh, data services now with IT, so looking at what are some of the functions that they do that we can share and, and help with the workload capacity. Um, other than that, it's great holiday season. Um, people are on vacation, I'm loving it. Um, got a great boss and yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Oscar, how's Telestaff working out for you? It's working out great for me because it's in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, no, that's that's a good good question, Director Cross. And I mean, we we always say hindsight is twenty twenty, and it's how much insurance do you want to pay for, you know? And so that's kind of the point. Not only us, but a lot of other financial institutions are at is, um, do you have it in the cloud or do you have it on premise? And to have it both places, you're gonna pay a pretty penny for that. And so it's you know, how much is it is that comfort worth? And so just looking at options and see what can we do to, to try to mitigate or reduce the amount of risk that we're supposed to. We'll tell you just off the cuff and we can talk later, but uh, the IT folks at Gresham found a person somewhere back in like Nebraska or someplace that had wrote some coding to take a snapshot of Talos staff because they were worried about that. And so they were able to take like a three month snapshot um, in, in case something like this ever did happen. And so they're going to be uh, writing code that does exactly that. It takes snapshots up to three months ahead of time in case something like this ever happens in the future. So I guess there's some really good information out on the blogs. But um, anyway, so I know that Gresham has a, at Gresham, the IT folks do have a, uh, something that will help them in the future, but right now they don't. <laughs> well, uh, well, one thing I forgot to mention is um, uh, our data services team, uh, payroll, um, they really uh, took charge of a call board um, and set up a, a way for us to track uh, time and attendance and also gave us some ideas going forward. You know? what can we do to be two weeks ahead of whatever date, you know, come and have a rolling uh, kind of a two week uh, calendar, just lack of a better term uh, going forward. So we've got some, some ideas going forward that I think we're gonna put into play just in case. And for the other board members, you may not be aware, but the staffing uh, scheduling module that the fire district and many school districts around the nation and hospitals around the nation and fire districts around the nation use had a cyber attack and it fit in the entire cloud system went, went down nationwide. So um, even though it's very painful for our local fire agencies, um, there are other, other places like major hospitals um, around the nation that use the same system that are suffering uh, significantly with this as well. So kind of been a big deal nationwide. So, mm -hmm. Thank you, Jay. Office of Business Services Assistant Chief Steve Dieters. I think Chris had a comment. Uh, Thomas. Oh, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, Thomas, I, I just back up to, to Brian. Uh, Brian, the, the C800 Accountability Committee met, I think, last week or week before. Are they still shooting for a go live of, I think, January 11th, or has that gotten pushed again? No, the the January 11th is the next target date. Okay, yep. good. 
Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> what city is this, Chris? It's the it's the C eight hundred. It's that communication. Oh, okay, right? okay, okay. I got C roped into I got roped into sitting on the citizens accountability board to watch the budget, but not be able to drive the bus. Drives me nuts. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Steve. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you, members of the board. As uh, the Office of Business Services uh, tonight, you're going to hear from uh, Division Chief Josh. Yerke, and he'll be giving you an update on human capital, capital. Uh, but also in this office is community services, and I know we uh, just finished up with Operation Santa for December, and uh, Chief Whiteley will be giving that annual update in January, as we normally have with all of the statistics and all of that, so we'll uh, look forward to that, but now I'd like to turn it over to Chief Yerke, and he'll give us an update. Excellent. Thank you, Chief and uh, members of the board. We've got a lot of stuff that's going on in human capital, so I'll try and keep this brief. Uh, the civil service, so we'll start there. We have uh, one applicant for the chief examiner position, that is me. I'm sitting in there as the um, temporary chief examiner, and that closed, so uh, the commission will be making a decision on that in January. We didn't get any applicants for the commissioner position that's vacant, and so we'll be um, opening that back up and seeking your guidance on that. Let's see, recruitment and onboarding. So recently, and you, you heard from Chief Stewart about uh, the position in fleet that we filled with uh, Amy Wilson. We've had several positions that we've filled and going back as far as September, just to give a quick update, the uh, certified athletic trainer was a position we filled and we're in the process now of uh, filling the finance manager in a finance administrative tech. The next section would be our DEI professional development testing and projects. And so I'll just give a, a quick overview. The apprenticeship program, right now we're waiting for the Department of Administrative Services to review proposed grant um, changes that we made. So as soon as we get that agreement back, that's uh, gonna be something that we bring forward to the board for approval so that we can enter into that and receive the grant funds and move this apprenticeship program forward. Uh, the lateral process. So we have 106 total uh, applicants moving forward, and that was just confirmed as of this morning. Uh, and then we're in the process this week of conducting interviews for the entry level process. And you heard from the interagency committee and the chiefs uh, on the feasibility study. So uh, we've we've covered that, but just the the date of the fourth, January fourth, is going to be the next uh, step in that, along with that week will be the stakeholder interviews that many of you've gotten uh, invitations for. So then lastly, I guess uh, the other thing to highlight would be the check-in system. I know uh, quite some time ago, you'd been briefed uh, on our employee evaluation process and how we'd made changes. This year, we're using and utilizing the um, access to, to personnel files uh, as a first um, first blush at how we're going to roll out um, conducting those annual appraisals based on check-ins that we've done throughout the year. We're also in the midst of editing that current handbook and adding uh, a team's check-in and the addition of um, basically it would be top-down and, and bottom-up uh, evaluations. So uh, more to follow on that. And then lastly on benefits, uh, we're just meeting our um, requirements as far as reporting. Um, we're going to be reporting out the uh, 1095s for the employer provided health care stuff. So we're just meeting our obligation on that front. And that is all I have for you this evening. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to attempt to answer them. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing that, I am going to make a little change. Uh, I see Genoa in the audience. Genova, do you have anything to update us or report us? You're muted. I have a very short update on the most recent special session. As you know, it was just a very quick one day session. There were just four bills in addition to the, the bill to adjourn. Um, the first one, 891, it, that was the um, extension of the moratorium on evictions and um, additional funds to assist landlords and tenants, as well as um, renters. 
The second one was um, a, a, it, it was a, it established a forgivable loan program for farmers and ranchers who had been uh, negatively impacted uh, by drought. And then um, 893 had to do with um, adding back some law enforcement, primarily to deal with some of the illegal marijuana grows. And then there was uh, 5561, which was an appropriation um, to a number of state agencies to implement the, the uh, three previous bills. But I think there's a couple of things there that you'll care about. Number one, there were a number of appropriations to local water districts and irrigation districts um, and some other local government entities. I did check thoroughly to see if there was anything going to Clackamas. Um, any of Clackamas County, and um, there, there were none. But then also, the there was a hundred million that was appropriated um, for the uh, farmers and ranchers for the disaster relief for drought. And just so you know, that came out of the hundred and fifty thousand. I'm sorry, the uh, hundred and fifty million disaster special purpose appropriation that had been. Um, allocated for wildfires and, and other disasters. Now what they're thinking, and there was this was a little bit controversial, they are thinking that those farmers and ranchers, since it is a forgivable um, program for their loans, they are hoping that money from the federal government will assist them in paying some of that back. And that money can be put back into the general, um, the special purpose uh, appropriation for natural disaster. But that's just something I wanted to flag to you because it, it was a topic of discussion and it, it's a little shocking that there'd be 150 million and 100 million of it would go you know, for, for that one program. So they are looking to put that back uh, through federal funds. And then they said, well, we're only 60 days away from the short session and we can deal with the, uh, the appropriation then. There, the state right now is awash in funds primarily because of the, um, the federal assistance that came through. But I just wanted to make you aware of that because it was something that was not flagged in the, the newspaper articles and other coverage that we saw. And that's all I have. And I apologize, I'm still on six o'clock time. Excuse me. That's okay, thank you. Thank Genova, you. Any board, board members have any questions or comments to Genova? Okay, none. Thank you so much. Thanks. Are you going to stay on or are you going to leave? I'm, I'm going to stay on. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, CFO Whitaker, please give an update from the Office of the Financial Services. Okay. Thanks, Thomas. Good evening. Um, so just a, a quick update. First of all, I mean, the, the financial report for the month uh, ending November is starts on, on page 33 of the packet. Um, if folks want to look at it, I won't I won't go over it. I hope hopefully those those charts speak for themselves. But if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and then some other updates on financial services. We currently have two vacancies um, on the finance team. Um, we a, one of our finance program specialists left in in August. Um, we've been filling that position temporarily. Um, and then in the meantime, I went ahead and, and reclassified that position from a program specialist to a um, a finance technician to better align the um the job classification with its duties and we did a, a recruitment and just wrapped up interviews and hope to have a new person on board uh january 5th and she'll be uh coming from us to from uh trimet where she has about three years of experience in accounts payable so we're ex excited to bring her on um and then second vacancy is um our accounting manager Ann lee uh left earlier this month to take a job with clackamas county um, and so I went ahead and slightly rebranded that position from accounting manager to uh, finance manager, just in the hopes of kind of broadening um, the duties that, that that job would take on and, and bringing on someone with a, with a larger breadth of experience so they could focus not just on accounting, but also budget and procurement and grants and all the things that we need the finance team to do. Um, and so we were able to complete a successful recruitment interviews for that. And we will have a new finance manager also starting for us on January 5th. And we're excited he's coming over from Portland Fire and Rescue, where he worked for about four years. Um, and prior to that, he did finance at Reynolds School District. So he comes to us with some, some good experience. Um, so excited to bring those two people on. Um, and then just my last update is I worked with our 
external auditor today. So as you may know, um, audits are supposed to be completed and filed with the state by December 31st. Uh, we went ahead and requested an extension um, for, for a number of reasons. Um, the, the largest one being Anne leaving. Uh, she was the, she managed our, our audit for the most part. And so that has delayed us. Um, but I'll also say, and, and I hope this, this board, and, and I know the fire chief will hold me to this, that, you know, we just, we start our audit process and our whole year in process too late. Um, and, you know, my, my goal for next year will be to start it much earlier um, and have an audit complete by October. So we'll, we'll be moving to, to do that once, once we get our new staff on and, and clean that process up for, for next year. But for this year, we've requested an audit until January 30, uh, sorry, requested an extension until January 31st. So um, I'll keep you updated on that at the next board meeting. And that's it. Any questions, comments? None, thank you. Division Chiefs, Josh Santos and Dan Mulek. Good evening, everyone. Um, from the Medical Services Office, um, this last month we did an EMS battalion drill that captured our career companies, our volunteer companies, and uh, a lot of our staff personnel that are EMTs or paramedics. During this drill, we covered uh, bleeding control, uh, the Lucas mechanical device, so it's a mechanical CPR device that is deployed and carried on every AMR ambulance and our medic units, which is very handy for uh, ensuring consistent CPR and freeing up personnel to do other 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 things on a cardiac arrest. Uh, and then we did high performance CPR training, which also fulfills the mandatory uh, CPR recertification process. So Captain Burkess led that, and he was partnered with the the training division, and uh, they they did a great job, and we got some great feedback from that. Um, tying into what uh, Director Cross was speaking to earlier. Um, on the 23rd of November, um, uh, me being the vice chair of the EMS Council, vice ch or chairperson uh, Matt Dale from Canby Fire, um, Chief Steve Bowie from Tualatin Valley, we partnered up with Public Health and we presented to the Board of County Commissioners an update on where we're at with the ambulance service plan review and the work progress on building a performance-based ambulance service agreement. Um, as you may recall, when the Board of County Commissioners changed directions from the original um, expiration of the ambulance service agreement, which was May of 2024, they redirected and uh, um, public health and AMR to negotiate in good faith in the development of a performance-based ambulance service agreement. And that was to be done by December 31st of this year. Uh, due to COVID and all the other factors that we all know of, um, that work just was not completed to 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 the level that should have been. So we presented where we were at and asked for an extension of that amendment number two to the ambient service agreement, which was uh, unanimously accepted. So our new ex expiration date for amendment number two to the ambient service agreement is December 31st of 2022. Uh, during that time, um, we are now going to be working with a consultant firm that we hired, um, Cambridge Consulting Group. Um, they are a 12 person team with a diverse range of experience with physicians, public based, private based and fire based ambulance service um, experience, um, majority from the East Coast, which is really healthy for us on the West Coast. And uh, we're going to begin work with them this month or the beginning of January. So on the 18th and 19th, they will do site visits and they will do stakeholder meetings. So we Clackamas Fire will participate heavily in driving them around and, and, and just showing them hosting them as they do site visits. And then we expect to finish that work um, with the consultant group for the ambulance service plan update by probably the end of July so we can develop a report to deliver to the Board of County Commissioners. In conjunction with that, we will also build the performance metrics that will be added into the ambulance service agreement that is built. Overall, this is a very positive thing for Clackamas Fire and Clackamas County as a whole because it will modernize our system and it will allow us to adjust our deployment models reflectively, which will make a sustainable business. It will have healthier employees and we will deliver a better service to the citizens we serve. Um, that is all I have to share this evening. Um, and I see Dan is in the crowd. So unless there's any other questions, I'll turn it over to Chief Mulek. Thanks, Josh. Uh, sorry for uh, for the, the dark background here. I'm in transit, leaving one of the incidents that went on this afternoon. Uh, just a quick update from operations side of things. Uh, pretty much spent the month of November uh, connecting with the battalion chiefs and the captains 
uh, with having meetings and, and getting uh, the alignment with uh, with operations uh, and kind of my message now that I've been in this position for for six, seven months uh, to give a clear direction where we're going for our next year, uh, laid out goals um, and expectations for our next year, and then really put a focus on uh, being able to align training and operations. So that is a big thing for us with uh, with the focus on strategy, tactics, and communications, like I mentioned, our last meeting, and then the planning with the amount of uh, academies and hiring that we're going to be working through. So uh, also tying into that, really working in with uh, the with the wildland side and uh, and meeting and getting a game plan together for just aligning our entire operation going down, uh, pretty much being in the same lane. So really spent the month of November focusing on that. Uh, as far as calls go, uh, we've kind of had a rash of technical rescue type calls uh, in and around our area, which is uh, which has kind of been an uptick of, uh, of from past years. Uh, so it's really kind of putting a focus on um, on, on what we've really been working hard for, just not having the calls to support it. And now we're kind of in that in that realm. So uh, really interesting, had a couple, uh, one today uh, as well. So um, things are moving great in operations. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them for you. Josh, do you have any more to update for the medical services? Is your report complete? I'm sorry. Do you have any more to report on medical services? No, sir. My no, report is complete. Okay. Thank you. Okay. But thank you, Dan. Any questions, comments? Nothing. Okay. Professional firefighters, local 1159 shop steward, Andrew Gordian. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Hi, I just Andrew. have a couple of things. Hi, uh, Director Joseph. So uh, first, I'd like to start off by congratulating uh, apparatus operator Randy Powers on the birth of his son, Hudson. Uh, another congratulations to apparatus operator Thomas Pickett on the birth of his daughter, Brooklyn. Uh, local M59 is participating in a joint fitness wellness study with Fire Chief Brown and Chief Goodrich. This study is facilitated through the International. Uh, the apprenticeship program, uh, Clackamas Community College related training was approved. The next step is joint apprentice committee approval, which should not be a problem. Local 1159 attended a meeting with Sandy Fire members at their request to start the discussion of coming to local 1159 from their current local 1660. The local has contacted the international to request a grant review process with D1 for AFG. This is a no cost service to the district uh, and the local. And finally, uh, kudos to Captain Buford and the Station 7 crews for all the extra work they've been putting in while telestaff has been down. And that's all that I have, if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Andrew. Anybody? Questions, comments? Okay. One small one, just real yes, quick. Sir. That partnership uh, for the grant services that Andrew spoke to is huge. Um, the information and insight that we got from that was, was awesome. So I just really, really appreciate that, that partnership and uh, that resource. Yeah, I, I appreciate that as well, uh, Andrew. Um, if, if for those of you who don't know, our focus for this AFG was cardiac monitors. Um, we submitted a grant in the amount of $1.8 million to secure uh, new cardiac monitors all across our fire district. And uh, the, the IAFF, their grant writing team, reviewed our, our submission like three different times and helped us a lot. So we're grateful for that, that recommendation. I had no idea that even existed. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. The Volunteer Association Secretary Jerry Carney. I knew, I know. She, we lost Thomas. Oh. Jerry's on here, though. Sounds like Siri needs to take over. Okay, so that, uh, well, thank you, uh, and Mr. President, members of the board, and chief officers present. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to address you. I would like to explain why it is me that's doing the addressing. Uh, uh, the president and the vice president were both unable to attend uh, tonight's meeting, so the uh, honor uh, fell to me uh, to give you what used to be Chief Dieter's report and uh, the president's report. 
during the uh, past month, there were three drills. They dealt with uh, winter weather operations and preparation for that, uh, hazardous material refresher, and uh, cardiac uh, arrest management. Uh, there were three events. Uh, Chief Dieters has already touched on uh, what they were. You'll be getting a much more detailed report next month uh, on uh, Operation Santa. Uh, the station coverage is as follows. Station 12 was 27 nights out of 30. Station 13 was 15 out of 30. Station 21 was 17 out of 30 when it was staffed and an additional uh, 14 uh, nights were covered by volunteers who were willing to respond if necessary from home. Uh, as far as the association goes, uh, we basically uh, were very pleased uh, to have uh, Chief Brown come to our meeting. We had two meetings in November. One was a business meeting that just got rid of all the paperwork things. But Chief Brown came and introduced to us uh, basically the new mission statement and uh, all that goes with it. And what really made it a, a, a pleasing experience was that he listened. He took notes. He made changes based on what our members had to say. And that was a pleasant uh, change and glad to hear it. Uh, aside from that, the membership uh, present, uh, uh, participated in the Operation Santa uh, static displays, and um, that's about all I have. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Jerry. Anybody has any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, you know, correspondence and informational items are um, included in our package. Uh, be before we adjourn the board meeting, I want to wish a ha very heartfelt Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all and your family. We now at 6.17. Thomas, I got a question. Sure. I, noticed, I, I noticed on the, uh, uh, the end of the agenda that it shows that our next board meeting is January 24th which is actually the fourth Monday of the month. What's uh, that's what because I... of, I think that's for January and February falls on the fourth because of the holiday uh, comes on the third Monday is both January and February are holidays. Okay. That's, that's my, I don't, I don't have in front of me, but that's my past history. That's fine. I, I didn't know if I was missing a, something that I should have not been missing or whatever. Um, no, no, no. And the other thing no. too, um, for uh, for uh, Chief Brown or, or uh, Tracy or something, I, uh, I noticed on my calendar, I have no Zoom meetings or any other uh, in, uh, invites for meetings uh, after this month. So I'm sure the other directors are in the same boat that we don't have anything on our calendars or district or calendars for next year, for Zoom meetings for next year. So just throw that out. I know it'll change. I know you'll fix it, but I like to plan. I like to have those things on my calendar so I don't. Uh, especially now that you have an appointment or yeah. something when I should be there. You know, Jay, especially now that you're retiring, you don't really have a lot of things to do. So you oh, need yeah. things on the calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, if I, you know, you know better than that. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. You we'll know. make sure those changes are added. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now the regular board of directors message is now. Recessed at 619. Board members, please log out of this Zoom meeting and log into executive session Zoom meeting. Good night, everyone. The executive session. In the executive session, we discussed the final battalion chief labor contract offer from the administration to the battalion chief group. And we discussed the leave of absence for an employee. Does any board member have any comments or 
questions to share or request for any questions about the leave of absence. Okay, hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve an unpaid leave of absence for up to one year to a, the, an employee who made the request? So I saw moved. Jim moved and Jay seconded. Tracy, please call the roll. Chris Haas. Yes. Jim Searing. Yes. Jay Cross. Yes. And Thomas Joseph. Yes. Thank the you. motion carried. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. Uh, anything you. else for the good of the order? Nick? Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Merry Christmas and happy new year to all. Appreciate Merry you. Christmas, everybody. See you next year. Thank you. Thanks. And happy retirement, Jay. Yes. 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 Congratulations, hey, Jim. Jay. Hey, Jim, maybe we can go together and celebrate his party. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm taking a limo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving my truck. That's an idea. Chris, I think we should be on that. I love that. <laughs> okay. Night. Good night, night. everybody. Night.